Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about SharePoint version control and how you can enable it to have version numbers against the documents in your SharePoint Online document library. So the first thing to talk about is, what is SharePoint version control? So SharePoint version control is what allows you to track what number version um, automatically is being added to your SharePoint documents as and when you're making changes to them. You can then add a version number uh, column to your views so you can actually see for example this is version 1 or this is version 2.1 um, and it will also allow you to check a full version history of exactly what's happened on that document and when and who made that change. Often this set of features is used by people that are setting up some kind of um, quality management system or audit say for example for an ISO accreditation. So what are the benefits of a SharePoint version control? So the benefit is, is that every change which is being made to your SharePoint documents is being tracked. You can get access to uh, a version history to see everything which has happened previously on that specific document. You can see right back to when it was originally created. And it's tracking not only changes to the content of the document, but also the title of the document and any associated metadata. So if you've tagged your document with who the say, owner of the document is and that changes, that also counts as a version change. Often people would also tag when a review date um, is coming up or there's loads of different things, categories, where, where there is, a, is it a policy, is it a procedure, there's different things you might want to tag the documents with and if any of those change, you want to make sure that you're keeping a firm sort of track of what is actually changing with those documents. So another common question is, what are major versions in SharePoint? So a major version is a whole number. It's like 1.0, 3.0. They are major versions. They are the latest published version of the document that you are happy with everybody uh, in your organization or whoever has access to this site has access to be able to see. So I often refer to the version control, they're often using like policy management systems. So you know what the latest version of the policy is. And you'd only be happy releasing the latest version of that policy to um, say your whole business um, however what one thing i'm going to come on to talking about is we can actually restrict the access of minor versions so our minor version is like where we've got 2.1 or 1.2 they're almost like draft they're being edited they're not yet um, ready for people to see so what we can do is we can hide those minor versions or those drafts as we like to call them um, from the end users so only the people who are editing the documents actually can see them um, and say Joe Bloggs typical end user who comes into the system he only sees the last uh, pro uh, sort of published version of this so say for example I was to come in as Joe Bloggs end user just has read access and I wanted to read the health and safety at work uh, policy I would just see version 1.0 or if it was equal opportunities I would just see 2.0 because I don't see those minor versions another common question and I've already started talking about this but what is SharePoint version history so the SharePoint version history is a auditor's dream because what it will do is it will show you exactly what has changed within a document, um, not only the content, but the title, the metadata, and also who changed it. So let's take a little look at how we find this. By going into our document library, we can select on a specific document and then we can click on the three dots and then click on version history. So this version history will give us a full audit trail of exactly what's happened with these documents. Now, I've only created these documents today, so there's not many sort of version histories. I've just put a little uh, sort of placeholder in here. We'll come on to talking about the amount of versions later on, but there could be hundreds of versions in here, going right back to when the document was originally created. So I can go back and I can see um, not only sort of the date when it was changed, but who changed it, the size of the file at the time. So say, for example, if something really big, a large portion of the document was deleted at some point, and we were trying to go back and find out when that point was, we can see the size of the document. Um, so all of a sudden, if this dropped to say uh, 7 um, KB, then I would know that something big was deleted from this particular document. You can also add comments as well as you're kind of going through this publishing process. And these will also be published alongside your version history. The other cool thing about the version history is you can actually go back and restore a document from a previous point in time. By clicking this drop down, we can see the document or view the document from that point in time at that version, even restore it back from that previous point in time. 
Um, so this just means then, say for example, I'm working on a document and I realize something's gone wrong here. Maybe someone has deleted something and I want to go back and restore the document from a previous point in time. That's where I'd go in, find the document that I want to restore it back to. Let's say, for example, I realized actually version two was how I want it. I go back, click on restore. And then what that'll do is it'll create version 3.1 from the content. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, from the content of version 2.0, which then means um, I can publish it, which will then create version 4.0 as my main kind of published latest version of the document. But the thing is, I'm never losing the kind of the content of version three. I'm not overriding 3.0 as the content at any point in time. So let's say, for example, then I realized, actually, no way, I was right all along. Version 3.0 is the one that I wanted. I can go back and restore it from that point in time as well. So you create this full version history. You're never losing content at any point in time. And it just means you can easily get back and restore the content from a previous version. Just as a halfway through reminder, please do subscribe to the channel, uh, like, comment, let me know if you've got any questions in the feed below. Um, any kind of engagement you can kind of give to my videos is really appreciated and will help the channel grow. Use the alert button as well to make sure that you're notified every time there's a new video um, and you won't miss out on any further SharePoint top tips. So how do we use SharePoint version control? So I'm going to show you now how to set this up from scratch. So jumping back into my document library, this is what a standard SharePoint library would look like out of the box. It will just have the normal columns and you can see there's no version column here yet. So the first thing we need to do is we need to enable the SharePoint um, version settings. To do that, it's, it's activated at each of the library level settings. So we need to click on the cog across the top right hand corner. Then we click on library settings and then we need to click on more library settings which is going to open up the settings of this specific library. I'm then going to select on this version settings on here. Now, when I click on version settings, this is now the version settings for this particular library that I'm going to enable. The first thing is it says, do we want content approval? Now, I'm not going to go fully into the kind of the content approval element of this today, because I will create some further videos in the future about approving documents. But this uh, can be enabled. So this can go hand in hand with the version control in the sense that, um, that every time that you publish a document for, to make it a whole major version, it needs to be uh, go through an approval process. SharePoint does have a out of the box approval button um, and you can also leverage the Power Automate features to um, maybe take the approval into Microsoft Teams, for example, um, and then come back and approve the document from there. The next option is the document version history. So this is the version control that we're enabling. You can either select to create major versions, which is only going to create whole versions like one, two, three, four, or in this case, I'm going to select create major and minors, which gives us draft versions. So I get the 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, for example. Um, we can then specify to keep the following number of versions. So let's just say 200. And you can even say keep drafts for the following number uh, of major versions or um, you can specify the, the, the kind of difference for the drafts as well. Um, next, we come on to the draft item security. So drafts, uh, as it's described here, drafts are minor versions or items which have not been approved. Specify which users should be able to view drafts in this document library. This comes back to what we were saying before about you can hide draft versions from end users. So you can specify that any users who can read items will be able to see drafts. We don't want that because we don't want people with read access to be able to see the drafts. Uh, we can say only users who can edit items or only users who can approve items. So if I'm just wanting to not have a content approval, and I just want to have the people who are editing these documents be able to see drafts, I'm going to select this, which means now Joe Boggs, typical end user who only has read access, who's a consumer of the documents, will only be able to go here and um, see the latest major versions of the documents. We can also specify whether we want uh, the checkout function, which is quite a classic kind of thing. I don't really like this idea of checking and checking out documents personally, because I think it leads to a lot of issues where someone checks out a document, forgets to check it back in again, goes on holiday for two weeks, and it just causes an absolute nightmare for their team members. So I think it's better to use the co-authoring functionality and just kind of ignore the check-in and checking out functionality. But then when we click on OK, so we've now enabled uh, the major and minor versions. I'm going to go back now to my document library. Select that URL. Back into my document library now. Now you'll see the version column has not appeared yet. 
and that's because although I've enabled the settings I haven't added the column into the view so you need to remember to add it into the view to do this we can click on the drop down click on edit current view and then if you scroll right down to the bottom of the fields that are in the view you've got this version number now I like to put it at the beginning so I'm going to select this drop down here and I'm going to select one go back up to the top and click on OK and that's then put it as number one in the columns here and we can see the versions now I do have version numbers here and that's because I did enable it before I recorded this video in order to play around with it a little bit to add some version numbers but yours uh, would show that only all the documents were at version 1.0 as that's they've not yet gone through that version control one final FAQ to answer about this uh, I often see is how many versions are kept in SharePoint. Now, this is a little bit of a sort of how long's a piece of string type of question because it's specific to the document library. So as we saw before um, in the settings, if I just go back to the library settings, again, just click on the cog across the top, library settings, more library settings, and then version settings. You'll then see the option here is to keep the following number of major versions and also you can enable to keep drafts for the following number of major versions now i think personally i think the sweet spot is probably about 200 versions something like that you can um, increase that much higher i've seen people have 500 versions things like that but what's worth noting is that every version of the document technically is another copy of the document so you're using up the storage allocation of this sharepoint site and your overall sharepoint environment so when people first get using this they max that out and they put loads of different versions and stuff in if you've got very large files and you've got thousands of files it can add up your storage much quicker than if you didn't use versions and actually one thing that i help people do is when they they call me and say look uh my sharepoint admin center is telling me that i've maxed out all my kind of um storage um and they want to look at ways of consolidating this before they purchase more one of the things i say is right okay well let's identify where version settings is enabled and let's go see if we can reduce them down do you really need 500 versions of these documents or could you get away with say 200 versions obviously it depends how often you're kind of updating them um but yeah it, it's something that is worth kind of noting I, I would keep it as minimalistic as you physically can i hope you enjoyed that video if you did please do subscribe to the channel like the video um, let me know if you've got any thoughts, questions, anything like that in the comments feed below and click on the alert button to be notified for future SharePoint top tip videos.